Don't Look Now is a 1973 film about a married couple who, while grieving the loss of their daughter, travel to Venice, Italy to restore a church. While in the city, they meet two sisters, one of whom is psychic, and tells the wife that she sees their dead daughter and that she is very happy. After the wife hears this news about her daughter's happiness, a weight has been lifted. Her grief and guilt, which is still there, isn't quite as debilitating. That night, she is able to smile again. She's able to laugh. And although the husband is beyond skeptical of the woman and what she's said, he chooses not to say anything, as he has not seen his wife this happy since the tragedy occurred. In the book by Daphne du Maurier, she writes, Now, he thought afterwards, now at last is the moment to make love, and he went back into the bedroom, and she understood and opened her arms and smiled. Such blessed relief after all those weeks of restraint. The film, however, is much different, making this moment start off small with a slight touch from Laura, and then it unfolds. Peter Bart spent 17 years as a film executive. He was vice president of Paramount Pictures, as well as senior vice president of MGM during the golden age of cinema. He was also the editor-in-chief of Variety for 20 years. According to Bart, he visited the set of Don't Look Now the day the infamous scene was being shot. Director Nicholas Rogue welcomed him and said, quote, The scene is supposed to be semi-erotic, and we've rehearsed it so everybody's fine with it. Fortunately, Julie and Donald are getting on quite well. Bart writes in his 2011 book, Infamous Players, A Tale of Movies, Mob, and Sex, that he realized the actors were not wearing the skin-colored clothing around their private parts that was the norm for these scenes. According to Bart, when Rogue said cut, the actors didn't hear him or didn't care. And then Bart decided to run for his plane. As the book came out, The Hollywood Reporter quoted Bart, saying, My gaze shifted to the actors and I was riveted. By their shifting positions, it was clear to me they were no longer simply acting. They were f on camera. End quote. That quote circulated throughout all the papers and throughout the world. Surprisingly, though, the first edition hardcover version says this, quote, My gaze shifted to the actors and I was riveted. End quote. What happened to the final part of that line? In the U.S., the MPAA censored the scene by cutting out nine frames of footage to get the R rating. The BBFC in the U.K., however, saw the scene to be, quote, tasteful and integral to the plot and allowed it as is, giving it an adults-only X rating. No, it wasn't just gratuitous for the sake of being gratuitous. Instead, the scene is an important moment for the two protagonists. The two have not been together romantically for some time, both of them suffering in their own ways, and in this moment, which starts ever so minutely, progresses intensely. The couple does not forget the tragedy by any means, but this is a place and time where they are able to come together with their shared grief, step away from their guilt, and look past it. They are able to move on from it. Warren Beatty was seeing Julie Christie during the filming of Don't Look Now. He approached Peter Bart, enraged, and told him he wanted to edit the film with him immediately. According to Bart, the two of them sat down together and cut some of Julie Christie's parts in the infamous scene. He said, quote, It was a quick editing job, but it seemed to represent a triumph for Beatty. Personally, if I was the director or the editor, I would be absolutely livid about this occurring on my film. The infamous scene and film in total is brilliantly edited by Graham Clifford. It cuts back and forth from the romance to the aftermath as John and Laura dress and get ready to go out to dinner. The editing enables the audience to see the throes of emotion both during and after. You catch the characters smirking to themselves or deep in thought at what just occurred. Their moment of love, the love that was fading fast after the tragedy, has been glimpsed once again. The editing throughout the entire film is beyond brilliant, but it should be pointed out that a lot of times, certain cuts are made based on the possibility of censorship. For this scene, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho actually comes to mind. As any film class will tell you, you never really see Mother's Knife stab the victim in the shower. You only think you see it because every time a stab would occur, it's the editor's cut instead. For Don't Look Now, replace the stabs with a pelvic thrust. Filmmakers can only get away with so much. Nicholas Rogue had the editor cut when a thrust was about to occur, and relying on a cutaway to them dressing themselves later on would give Rogue the wiggle room to work with the censors. 
but the scene's raw depiction of married lovemaking brought many spectators, not just Peter Bart, to wonder, was this scene only acting? Many people believe that Sutherland and Christie actually had intercourse during this scene. According to the people on set that day, this is how it happened. And we shot that love scene very quickly. We shot it in an hour and a half. No one knew we were shooting it. We rented a room in the, in the Bar Grumwald Hotel, and we shot it one Saturday, one Saturday afternoon. It was just Nick, a focus puller, Simon Ramsley, and myself, and obviously Julian Donald. We shot it with a little handheld camera, smuggled it into the hotel. The rest is history. When asked about people saying the lovemaking in the scene was real during his 2018 premiere of The Leisure Seeker, the then 82-year-old Donald Sutherland proclaimed, they're idiots. Heavily directed all the way through that. You, get, you were just alone in the room with Nick and Tony Richmond, two unblimped Aeroflexes. And Nick is saying, you know, you get this, ah, like that. And Nick is saying, all right, ah, Donald, put your mouth on Julie's breast. Ah, all right, Julie, come. Ah, it's like that. Sutherland loves the scene because it, quote, reminded you of making love. Julie Christie loves the scene because it, quote, managed to get the extraordinary thing that happens when you are making love. I love the squirming bits and all those things you don't see, end quote. Now, almost 50 years later, the scene doesn't seem nearly as risque as some more recent films like And long before Don't Look Now, there was Hedy Lamarr's on-screen orgasm from 1933, and many, many more. Some 50 years later, it seems much more logical to believe the people who were actually in the room, versus an irate boyfriend or a guy trying to make headline news when trying to sell a book. It's a moment where a married couple perhaps conceived a child, which makes the ending of Don't Look Now all the more tragic, but understandable, as we see Laura Baxter with her sadness in her eyes, but a smile on her lips as well.